The best way to start solving this problem is to use conservation of energy. So, we know that potential energy at the top must equal the kinetic energy at the bottom. The potential energy of the sphere is mgh as measured from the bottom of the incline. The kinetic energy term consists of 1 half mv squared, but also 1 half i omega squared to account for the rotational motion. As we substitute terms using the fact that omega equals v over r, canceling out the m's, gh equals 1 half v squared plus 1 quarter v squared gh equals 3 fourths v squared, so v equals the square root of 4 thirds gh. Now on to part b. So what forces act upon the rolling cylinder? Well, there's the gravity force of mgh, which affects the center of mass, so we'll draw it from the center. So the force of mg is acting downwards, and there's also the frictional force, which acts at the bottom of the cylinder, since it opposes the motion, therefore it should be directed up the incline, and a normal force that is directed perpendicular to the incline. Now on to part c. Starting with torque equals I alpha, and the only force that can exert such a torque is the frictional force, so the force of friction exerted a radius away, equals one half m so I equals one half m r squared, and we can say alpha equals A over C m. ACM over R. Solving this, we get the force of the friction is equal to, it's equal to one half MA. Note that all accelerations are taken from the center of mass. So that's A ACM actually. Now we can use F equals MA. So some of the force in the X direction equals MG sine theta minus the force of friction, which we found was one half MA. And since F equals MA, this means that it equals so there's a f equals ma canceling out m g sine theta equals three halves a and therefore a equals two thirds g sine theta so now on to part d so we can now substitute what the force of friction we got we can substitute that into our equation so the force of friction is equal to one half m times the acceleration two thirds g sine theta or mg sine theta over three looking at the forces we also know that the force of friction is equal to umg sine cosine theta, setting the two expressions equal, crossing out the mg, dividing sine theta by cosine theta, loop tangent theta, mu equals tangent theta over 3. For part e, it is helpful to think of this problem conceptually. So for i, for example, it, we can think of like the translational speed requiring some energy and the rotational speed requiring an additional amount of energy. So that means if you reduce the, the rotation speed, the energy going to that is reduced, which means the translational speed can be increased. Therefore, for EI, we should have an answer of a greater force, a greater speed for that, for that value. However, for part two, we see that the total kinetic energy is going to be less because of the fact that some val some heat some energy is lost as heat due to friction, so I is greater as I said because since there's less rotational speed, the translational speed can be increased. And for part two, energy is less because there's actually kinetic friction which takes up energy as opposed to static friction that occurs when it doesn't slip. Anyway, so this is problem five twelve, dealing with rotational motion. And it's Ashwin, and thank you for your time.